Hello friends. So before we get too far into fall, I know we're pretty far into fall. I wanted to give you guys some fall reading recommendations simply because like fall cozy type of reading is my absolute favorite. And I also feel like I have quite a lot of new recommendations this year. I have probably made this video so many times in the past. I will try to find those videos and link them for you guys down below just because I do think that I've had good recommendations in the past if I do say so myself, but I don't wanna like regurgitate old things to you that I've already talked about a lot, just not to waste your time. Because to be honest, there are quite a few things that I think are worth mentioning that I've probably talked about quite a few times and it like really gets to me not putting them in this list. But like I said, I know I've talked about them before. They're talked to death on booktube. So let's talk about some new things today. I've only included a handful of books that I previously read. And because there are so many books to get through, this is gonna be like super short and sweet when it comes to what they're about. I think that most of you guys know about Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. Maybe it's because I first read this in the fall and then I watched the adaptation in the fall. Maybe that's why it just sticks with me so much, but also the way that they're at this English countryside at this exclusive boarding school. And to me, boarding school, school setting, those things will always be like cozy vibe feels. So that's absolutely a theme throughout this video of boarding schools and school settings. This is really sad. It's really not like a light, easy read. Um, it's definitely very heavy. And I would say you have to like really use a lot of brain power to like get through the writing and totally get the vibe and feel an understanding of what's going on. So this is perfect if you want something short and sweet, but that's going to be really impactful this fall. Another one that I know I've talked about so much is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Rashani Chakshi. This is a beautiful fairy tale, fairy tale vibe fantasy book. It's following the man's perspective, this like unraveling of this marriage, following multiple timelines and lots of secrets. Once again, a very like gothic, fairy tale type of setting with secrets and friendships. Yeah, Indigo agreed to this marriage with a promise that her bridegroom would never pry into her past. So we know where that's going to go. Lots of secrets, gorgeous writing, gorgeous setting, just all around a great fall reading recommendation. Okay, what do I want to go to? Two more that I read previously. One is Wayward, and this has Immaculate Fall vibes to me. It's very dark in tone, atmosphere setting. All of the things scream fall to me when it comes to that. Um, but it's also just a really brave story that kind of spans a lot of different timelines as well because we're following at least three different women, I believe, 2019, 1619, and 1942. And it's really just about what women go through. And I don't want to be misleading because I wanted to say it's a, a book about women's strength and resilience, but in not in a way that's like, this is happily ever after. And we're going to watch women be able to like necessarily change things because not everyone gets their happy endings. So this definitely isn't going to leave you with an overall like happy feeling. Um, it can be relatable probably to a lot of women, myself included. It's honestly like almost a five star read and I think fall is the perfect time to read it if you've been on the fence about it. And same thing with The Book of Gothel by Mary McMine. This I read maybe last year or the year before, and I am just obsessed with it. It's like a spin on Rapunzel. Well, it says the truth behind the fairy tale of Rapunzel, but it's about the witch who put Rapunzel in the tower, and it's set in Germany in 1156. So like, once again, like a historical fantasy setting, which is just absolutely perfect. Lots of, once again, dark atmospheric vibes and themes and heavier like undertones, very women empowering in my opinion as well. And I just feel like this didn't get as much attention or praise on booktube as I wanted it to because I mean, it was like, these books were like favorites when I read them and I just want other people to love them too. Okay, out of the next couple, I guess we'll go with the one I read longest ago, but I still don't know if I was on booktube when I read this book, maybe I was. That is Where the Dark Stands Still by A.V. Poronek. This could go for winter reading recommendations just as much as fall. Maybe I should have saved it for that. Um, but if you can see from the cover and the back cover, like that is the vibes of the book that we've got going on here. There is this wood, a demon infested spirit wood. 
and our main character goes there to steal a flower. If she plucks it, she can use the wish to banish her powers because no one wants powers. You're like shunned if you have powers in this world. But she's whisked away to this man's manner that she meets out there. So she has to serve him for one year. So, I mean, it's going to twist and turn from there. This is a, I don't think it's Polish. Yeah, it, it is like Polish inspired, Polish folklore. So this is just absolutely beautiful all around. You might see it again in my winter recommendations. I don't know, but I'm going to convince you guys to pick it up. I had a few friends that I read it with and they loved it as well. And then another one that I read in the recent past is A Study in Drowning. I buddy read this with my friend by Ava Reed. And this has a dark academia setting as well. It's about a girl who has loved these stories. She's had visions of this fairy king um, because she's read these books about the fairy king and the mortal who he falls in love with. There's, so maybe it's not a dark academia. It just feels that way because she wins this like academic contest to go to this manor um, with another person that she meets there. And she's trying to get to the bottom of what visions she's seeing as they're there to basically like redesign this estate so it's kind of like two rival students having to work together and uncover the mysteries the mystical magical very very dark and atmospheric again those are gonna be keywords for every single thing I say here okay we'll probably go with a couple next that don't really need any introduction because so many people already love them so the one being I hold up wisteria specifically because wow I never opened these end pages that's pretty I didn't know that was there. This is book two to Belladonna. So obviously you have to read Belladonna first, but if you can read Belladonna and then get to Wisteria, this is book three. I'm losing it, you guys. I mean to say Foxglove. I'm not going to get Foxglove off my shelf. This was the most recent one I hauled. Okay, so it's a trilogy. Read them all this fall. It's a perfect time to read them all in the fall. Like, I will not lead you astray. They are excellent. My camera just fell. If everything looks different, that's why. Foxglove specifically gives really spooky like Halloween time vibes. And so I love it for that because you're dealing with like fates and death himself. And the second book you're dealing with like ghosts and she can speak to the ghost. So there's a lot of, but it's not like in a witchy Halloween way. It's definitely more in like a Gothic fantasy way. So these young adult fantasy novels really took me by surprise. I loved the plot, the writing, the characterization. I was never bored. I think this is a really solid fantasy trilogy. So while I would say book two, Foxglove is the most fall-ish, I think they're all great to read in the fall. I can't explain to you why, but Caraval feels like the perfect book to me to read this fall. I did just finish it for the first time. And I think because it gives me those like whimsical dark vibes. So Alice in Wonderland, like you're not sure what things are going to go awry, like not good whimsy, bad whimsy, but kind of like all over the place, if that makes sense. You guys probably all know the plot. I haven't even said the plot of any of these books. Hardly have I, that's okay. We're gonna go to Caraball, right? Like these girls have, these sisters have a terrible home life. Their father doesn't treat them well. They've always wished to go to this carnival, Caravel, and they're finally gonna go before one of the sisters is married off and things are gonna go awry when they get there and it's just all about the ride. I need to continue this series actually. I'm waiting for the library books to come in. So hopefully that will happen soon because I do feel like finishing them this fall would be just perfect. Another one that you guys already all know about, you girls, ladies, fellas, everyone was screaming about it way before I was. And I talked about it in a wrap up where I tried to read it once before and it just didn't get to me from the audio. And then I tried the eBooks and the eBooks were magnificent. So we've got this duology here, One Dark Window and Two Twisted Crowns by Rachel Gillig. These are just so delightful, lovely, wonderful. Um, from the vibes, the setting, the atmosphere, the characterization, the plot, the magic, the romance, the relationships, they're genuinely like almost five star books. And I say that like, because it's really hard to find a book that's five stars for me that really just like goes above and beyond. And I was so shocked and blown away by how much I really loved this. Um, I think I love the magic so much because we're dealing with magic in the form of these cards. Basically, people used to get magic from this wood and then they didn't want to rely on that. So they wanted to put it into these cards because when you're holding the card, that's how you get the power for it. And I don't know what I can say without being spoilery, but our main character has this monster in her head, trapped in her head that she calls a nightmare. And we're gonna learn a lot about that and have a great ride along the way. So these are phenomenal fall 
all books through and through. Okay, the next four are probably my favorite on this list and they're just books that I wholeheartedly love so freaking much. I don't even know what order I wanna go in. Let's probably go with number three. Yeah, number three, Phantasma by Kaylee Smith. I read this before I heard anyone talk about it because it was on KU and I'm really glad that I got to read it before it became super popular because I have a hard time, like sometimes hype gets to me and then I get too caught up in it. I have too high of expectations or I don't know. I don't really have a good reason, but I'm really glad that I read it. This is so fun. Ophelia discovers her mother murdered and she inherits the family's magic. Her sister decides to pay off this debt for their home or that their mother had by entering Phantasma, which is a competition where contestants rarely escape alive. And the victor is granted a wish. So, I mean, obviously that sounds similar to the premise of the other book I just read, but they're truly nothing alike. So Ophelia wants to save her sister. The only way she can do that is by also entering Phantasma. It's a cursed manor full of twisting corridors, lavish ballrooms, staffed by enticing demons and, a, and fatal temptations. She has to conquer all nine floors to succeed. And these games, like they can get to your head and make you see things and envision things. So she meets a charming, arrogant stranger who claims he can help. And she knows better than to trust him, but her sister's life is on the line. So she has to look to him for help. You guys, this was so good. I think there might be a sequel or just like a companion or something, but I cannot literally wait to pick up the next thing by her. I was so blown away. This was such a, this was such a fun read to me. I think I went in with zero expectations. And so I was totally blown out of the water. Is this book one? I don't know why it says one on the back. Maybe there's going to be a sequel. All I know is like, obviously go in with the right expectations. It is a bit of a fantasy romance, but wonderful phenomenal obsessed with it so that's number three what am i gonna pick for number no that's number four am i okay am i well i don't think i'm having a rough day you guys number three because phantasma was number four number three is going to be gothicana by i don't have any idea how you say this because what runix i don't know I thought this author was famous for like a dramine fanfic maybe but i can't really be certain it's just as a tale of dark romance on the front. I, there's probably so many things wrong with this. Probably shouldn't like this book. I don't want to get hate for saying I like this book. This is quite the dilemma. I don't know if you're on my channel, you might also like this book. Well, it depends on like when you join my channel. It's stunning. Let's just first talk about like, it's so pretty. And I'm going to read you the tagline. It says, Vad Deverell, the silver eyed devil of Varenmore the dark god who played like it was both a blessing and a curse. Her multifaceted, enigmatic, one-time lover who knew the secrets of her soul. He'd found her. So this is like dark academia. So Corvina Clem has been an outcast her entire life after losing her mother. And then she receives admission from a mysterious university of Varenmore. So she decides to go. It's a secluded castle on the top of a mountain riddled with secrets, deceit, and death. So once again, the settings um, and atmosphere, this very like gothic, immaculate fall vibes, just the perfect fall book. So Vad, he's a very close book, but knows everything that happens at the university. He's a part-time professor working on his thesis and he kind of knows all the ins and out of the castles. So they shouldn't have caught each other's eyes, but a chilling century old mystery forces them to collide. So there's people that are disappearing and Corvina is trying to gather all the clues. And it says, so begins a tale of the mysterious, the morbid, the macabre, and a deep love that blossoms in the unlikely of places. I'm gonna leave it at that. Look into it before you decide to pick it up, but immaculate. That's number three. Number two, also immaculate vibes, is An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. This is like just perfection. The little quote on the, the front here says, Gibson's fang sharp prose and unflinching honesty create a delicate and fearless exploration of loneliness, love, and longing. And it is just that. The back says one of us was going, always going to bleed for the other. I just think that's really pretty. So this is a dark academia. Again, perfect for fall time. I love this so much more than a dowry of blood, you guys. So we have, this is setting in Massachusetts at a women's college. It's isolated and ancient. It says here, secrets are currency, ambition is life, but blood and strange ceremonies welcome students into the fold. 
On her first day, Laura is thrust into an intense academic rivalry with the beautiful and enigmatic Carmilla. Together, they're drawn into the confidence of their demanding poetry professor, De La Fontaine, who holds her own dark obsession with Carmilla. But as their rivalry blossoms into something far more delicious, Laura must confront her own strange hungers. Tangled in a sinister game of politics, bloodthirsty professors, and magic, Laura and Carmilla must decide how much they're willing to sacrifice in their ruthless pursuit of knowledge. Um, so it is a romance between Carmilla and Laura. Well, maybe I shouldn't even say that. I don't know. I, I think like the less you know, the better. But the writing is absolutely stunning. So you have this very gothic, dark setting where you're completely immersed um and the writing is so so beautiful and then the story is just really great on top of it it's really dark i like the romantic aspects it's just immaculate so that's actually my number two pick out of these four and then my number one pick if you watched my wrap up or maybe it was no if you watched my tbr you won't be shocked but my number one fall recommendation, not for everyone, but if you like any of these other things, is Nocticadia by Carrie Lake. I don't know. I think this is going to be a series. How do I even begin to describe this? Dark Academia. I think it's once again a New England coast. I think it's on a little island off the coast of Maine or Massachusetts or some, somewhere over there, up over there, okay? A very gothic setting in this old school on this island. It starts out with this main character, her mother dying of a mysterious illness, okay? So she's always been really curious about that horrible home life. The girl has been through so much. She's trying to take care of her sister. And then she gets a mysterious acceptance letter to Dracadia University, one of the oldest and most prestigious schools in the country. Oh, nestled off the coast of Maine. That's right. So it's rumored to be haunted by the souls of the mental patients exiled there centuries before those whose bones are said to make up the island's white sandy shores. But there's another character there, Deverick Bramwell, known as the campus's Dr. Death, a brilliant pathologist in charge of the Midnight Lab devastatingly handsome professor who seems to loathe tenacious first years. So, I mean, I think we know where this is going. So they have to work together. She's uncovering so many secrets. This is very, very dark, but there's like bits of horror elements, but nothing like too much, like too over the top. And you're having some like human experimentation. You're having some dealings with like worms and it's just like 10 out of 10. Like this is so good. The romance, the spice is top notch i'm here for it all the way love every second of it so this is my number one recommendation you know what you guys i forgot i have my laptop over here so i'm gonna give you guys two more recommendations super quick um but those were my top main four i wanted to go over the other one is if you want just a more typical fantasy like lighter on the romance stuff i would recommend night strider by sophia slade this is so much fun. It is a fantasy. It does have a little romance element, but you are following these creatures of nightmares and they all have different names and different types of powers and abilities when it comes to that. So you're following like three or four different characters who are working together to defeat like the main one bad guy who's keeping all these people like under his power. So some are in this nightmare dream world realm and some are in the regular realm and one of the girls who knows a lot and is trying to protect this person who could be like the key ends up being in an arranged marriage with the son of the king who is one of the bad guys so it's like everyone all kind of coming together so well done and entertaining and then the other one I will say if you want something cozier is the pumpkin spice cafe by Lori Gilmore I didn't love this. I gave it like a three out of five maybe. It's not super wowing or great, but it does have perfect fall vibes. I loved the premise, the idea, the setting, the atmosphere. The only thing for me that really fell short was the romance, like the chemistry, the believability there I couldn't get invested. But if you just want to read something super cozy with really cute fall vibes, then I did want to put this option on here. So that was a lot of books in a little amount of time. Hopefully you'll find something you like to read out of this list. I would love to hear your top fall recommendation. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.